Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Bucky Badger W, and today we have the start of a new series on this channel. That's right, today I'm kicking off the start of my new series where I break down the top 10 players at every position in the National Football League. It's going to be a very fun series today, and I've seen everyone else is starting with quarterbacks and going down through running backs, receivers, tight ends. I'm going to start at the very end, and I'm going to start with safeties. I'm going to kind of work my way up uh, as to be an outlier here. But yeah, so I have broken down over the past couple weeks through stats, kind of analytics, obviously watching these players. I have broken down who I presume to be the top 10 safeties in the league. And just simply for this video, my criteria doesn't take into account all pro selections, um, you know, pro bowl selections. It doesn't take into account any of that because that can be skewed by narrative. I just wanted to come into this with a clean slate, a clean mind, and you know, see who I thought were the top 10 safeties in the NFL. Also say if there's something that you don't agree with, if you, know, you think your guy is too high or too low, then drop me a comment. I'd love to get into a, conversa a conversation with you about it because that's one of the best parts about doing this, uh, getting into conversations with people about football, which I like to do. And before I continue, I would like to say, if you like the video, please like, um, subscribe, do all of that. It'd be very appreciated. If you don't like the video, um, I mean, you can drop a dislike, I guess. Maybe drop me a comment and say what you disliked about the video. I'd be happy to change that to make a better product in the future. But without further ado, let's get into first some honorable mentions of some guys that didn't make the list, and then we'll get into the top 10. But yes, so some guys that other lists had um, maybe inside their top 10 or really high on their top 10 that I evaluated and I really just didn't see it. Um, we got Micah Hyde from the Bills, Quandre Diggs from the Seahawks, Marcus Williams from the Saints, uh, Adrian Amos from the Packers, Eddie Jackson from the Bears, Devin McCourty from the Patriots, John Johnson the third from the Cleveland Browns, and as you see, Marcus May from the Jets. That is in no particular order other than Marcus May, was at the top of the list. He was very close, Jets fans, to making this top 10. But now let's finally get into this top 10 with, as you see, number 10 of the Buffalo Bills, Jordan Poyer. And I saw a lot of people actually had his teammate, Micah Hyde, a little bit higher than Poyer on their lists. I didn't really see it. When I watched the Buffalo Bills, I thought that Poyer really jumped out at me as the better player. I think he's more versatile. He's really better to me at pretty much every aspect of the game, especially around the line of scrimmage. Uh, he form, obviously forms a really good safety tandem with Micah Hyde, one of the best safety tandems in the league. Um, but really, yeah, he just jumped out to me as the better player. I think he made key plays at key moments. And although he's not the flashiest safety, he's a very good one and a very important piece to Buffalo's really good defense. That's why he slots in here at number 10. Now on to number nine, a player that actually had a very down 2020, at least by his standards, Kevin Byard of the Tennessee Titans. Now he's normally an elite single high safety or just a safety, you know, hanging over the top that kind of cleans up everyone's mistakes. Uh, you know, they take really everything deep, normally very rangy for those that don't know, but he wasn't really there at that aspect of the game last year. As you see, he allowed a 112.6 passer rating, which isn't good. Um, now, it was a down year for the entire Titans defense. They allowed 27 points per game last year, which is 24th in the entire National Football League. So, you know, maybe you can expect a bounce back with Bayard with just a clean slate, a fresh slate this year. Um, you know, so maybe you can expect a bounce back for him because when he's at his best, he has a strong case for top five. But last year, just, you know, at what he's good at, he just really wasn't all that good, which is why he slots in here at nine. Now on to number eight, a player that I'm definitely a lot lower on than other people, Minka Fitzpatrick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And because this is a video to not nag on people and try to promote star players, uh, I'm not going to get into what makes me down on him first. I'm actually going to get into what I really like about him first. Uh, he's very smart. He's a very smart safety, one of the smartest in the NFL. He's, you know, there's really... Nothing that you can run at him that he's not going to see coming. Um, he's one of the best true free safeties in the National Football League. Per Pittsburgh is definitely the perfect place for him because he's just able to kind of, you know, let everything develop in front of him. And he's going to be on the back end, you know, and Minka will do Minka. And that's kind of the role that a lot of these safeties in the top 10 get to play. And you really see how they flourish in it. 
Um, he has a very good case for top five before um, before I get into what's what I'm lower on him about. But I think the main thing that I'm low on him about is that he's not great around the line of scrimmage, which is fine because that's you know that's the case for a lot of uh, true free safeties. Even though he's he's very solid, but I'm a little bit lower on him because a lot of the plays that he made, I thought he kind of lucked into or the Pittsburgh defense kind of forced the play to him, like, you know, a, a quarterback would be under pressure and kind of just, like, throw up a, a wounded duck, hoping that someone would catch it and it would go right to Minka or, you know, there'd be a pass batted at the line of scrimmage because that's what Pittsburgh's front seven did last year, which isn't to, you know, that isn't to say bad things about Minka. It's not really his fault that that happened, but I just thought a lot of the stats that he had where he saw he had four picks last year, I thought a lot of those were really kind of empty calories, um, if you know what I'm saying. Even though he's still a great player, which is why he's a number eight here, could be a lot higher. Now, at number seven on this list is a player that is probably very polarizing, one of the most polarizing players to rank on here, Derwin James of the Los Angeles Chargers. And I think what makes him one of the most difficult players to rank is that even though the consensus is that he's an amazing player you know he's one of the most fun he's probably the most fun to watch safety they're gonna see on this list i think one word to describe him is probably electric or a playmaker you know he just flies around the field and makes these ridiculous plays he's yeah like i said he's arguably the, the most fun to watch safety in the nfl he's probably best around the line of scrimmage and he just makes plays there although he can make plays on the back end too the only problem really with derwin right now is that I mean, he's he's going into now his fourth year, and he's only played 21 games in his career. He's he started all 16 games his his kind of freshman year, and then in his sophomore year, he only played five with an injury, and then last year he had an injury which had him out the entire season, didn't play a game, which you know it's just hard to put a guy that hasn't been able to play really all that much at all, you know all that high on this list even though he's an amazing player and he's so fun to watch i just think you know we need to see how he bounces back from these injuries and if he's able to stay healthy to rank him really high on this list although he can be as high as number one easily next year uh if he's able to bounce back now to the number six safety on this list we go of the arizona cardinals buddha baker now it's a shame that probably the most famous play of buddha's career is going to be him getting chased down by DK Metcalf on national television on Sunday Night Football last year. That's a shame because one word to describe Buda Baker, just like I just said, one word to describe Derwin is electric. One word to describe Buda is playmaker. This guy, he flat out makes plays, right? I mean, he's, in my opinion, the second best safety. You can argue Derwin, but maybe the second best safety around the line of scrimmage in the National Football League. Uh, I mean, he's just, he's he's not bad in coverage either, which is kind of a narrative that seems to be pushed, but he's not, he's not bad in coverage at all. Um, and he just, he makes plays all around the field. He flies around the field. He's in the backfield all the time, you know, chasing after quarterbacks. He's able to get interceptions. He's able to do everything. And, you know, the only negative that I really see with Buddha is that he's not, number one, he's not great in coverage, even though he's, he's not as much of a negative as people think he is. I don't even know if he is a negative, he's around average there. But also, while he makes a lot of plays, he also misses a lot of plays. Like, you know, when he's when he's getting in the backfield and he's leaving his assignments, it seems like, you know, he lets up a lot of plays on the back end, which I don't know if that's just me not understanding the Cardinals defense, which, you know, very well could be. But I think just to me, it looked like while he made so many plays, he also... He also kind of let his defense down a lot, although he's a big time playmaker. So that's why he, he's here at six and number five. Some of you may not know this name because it seems like he is never talked about among the best safeties in the NFL. It's Jesse Bates, the third of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think Bates is definitely overlooked a lot because he's easily the best player on a terrible Bengals defense. You know, this Bengals defense, it's not good whatsoever. It's, it's just not, it's not pretty. And Jesse Bates, he makes up for so much on that defense that just goes unnoticed, which is a shame. 
Um, you know, he's, I think, the second best single high free safety in the National Football League behind a guy that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, he's extremely rangy. Like there isn't a throw, a, you know, a deep ball that he that he doesn't get to, and he'll make a play on the ball because he has very good ball skills. Um, one thing we haven't really seen him be a very good box safety, just because I mean he hasn't really been in that role. But also, we haven't really seen him make a lot of plays around the line of scrimmage. Period. So that's kind of you know something to look out for, I guess. But really, with Bates, he's just a ridiculous playmaker on the back end. And he's a guy, I mean, there's a lot of guys on here that next year could have an argument for number one on this list. Jesse Bates is definitely one of them because I could see him having, you know, he could have 10 picks this year and I wouldn't really be surprised. That's how good he is. He has the mix of ball skills, ranginess, everything you need to be an elite single high free safety in the National Football League. Now on to the guy who, other than Derwin, is probably the most polarizing safety to rank um, on this list. Is number four, Jamal Adams of my Seattle Seahawks. And the reason why it's so polarizing to rank is that, I mean, really everyone agrees that he is pretty undisputably the NFL's best box safety by a wide margin, which means, you know, he's basically a linebacker. Like Jamal Adams would be very good as a linebacker because, because he's just so good, you know, in run defense. He's definitely, he's one of the best pass rushing defensive backs of all time. Uh, you know, the way that he's able to get past blocks, he's like a linebacker, or like a defensive end or something. I mean, you know, he had, he has to have a background with that. I don't know, but like, you know, as a run defender, he hits, like when he hits people, you know it. Um, you know, he's, he's very good at reading holes and reading, you know, where the running back's going to go. And he's able to make those plays. He's a ridiculous athlete with his hit power, his strength, his speed everything but you know everybody agrees the one problem with him is that he is bad in coverage and I think the reason you know a lot of people have him down at like 10 to 15 in that range I think the reason I have him down here is because number one he's the best at something and I think when you're easily the best at you know one type of your position you have to be really high on this list which he's the best box safety in the NFL by a wide margin and also, I think, you know, he was exposed against guys like Cooper Cup last year from the Rams, uh, Edelman from the Patriots, you know, just very shifty guys that I think if the Seahawks, they this year try to man him up against like tight ends or something, uh, guys that aren't as shifty and he can, you know, try to impress and, you know, he can use his physicality against them. I think he'll be a lot more successful. And I think that it'll be a much better outcome for the Seahawks. So I hope that they do that this year because, you know, just Jamal Adams, his potential or like what he what he can be if you use him right is so good. And now on we go to the number three player on this list, Harrison Smith of the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, man, I mean, I watched the Vikings last year and this guy, I mean... I thought that he had a down year when I watched him last year, and then I go back and I watch like more Vikings and like more of their defense as I'm preparing for this video, and I look at more stats. I'm like, well, he was really, he was really dang good. I mean, you see the missed tackle rate of 8.2 percent, very good for a safety. Passer rating allowed 71.6, which is extremely low, maybe the lowest on this list. I'm not sure, um, but he's I think the smartest safety in the NFL. Uh, it's it's either him or maybe Minka or somebody else that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but he's definitely up there. I would say it's him, the smartest safety in the NFL. He's a great disguiser, probably the best in the NFL of that, at disguising what he's going to do before the snap. Aaron Rodgers is, has talked about him. He's talked a lot about Harrison Smith doing that to him over the years. He has great coverage instincts, so even though he's not... And he, obviously he's athletic. You have to be very athletic to play safety in the NFL. He's not like the, he's not like a Jamal Adams type of athlete or uh, even a Jesse Bates type of athlete. But he has extremely good instincts and, you know, when to go for a swat of the ball. Like, you know, that's why he has, um, that's, why he have, that's why he has 10 passes defended. Uh, that's why he has five picks because he just knows when to break on a ball he knows kind of what route a receiver is going to be running. 
he's great about that. He's great versus the run. He's you know, one of the best against the run in the NFL. He's a great pass rusher, easily one of the best at those or at that in the NFL. You send him on a blitz, he's gonna get there, just like Jamal Adams, Buda Baker, those guys. The, stat, the stats that you see on the screen, they speak volumes. You know, if you've been paying attention to those stats along the video, you see they're they're some of the best. Like every category, there is some of the best that we've had all video. And I th obviously, again, I thought he had a relatively down year, but he was great last year. So Harrison Smith. You can easily make an argument for him being number one. You know, he just trudges along, and you know, people don't really recognize him as being great, but he's a great safety. Uh, he deserves his respect. Another guy who definitely deserves his respect, very underrated, uh, the best single high free safety in the NFL by a wide margin, Justin Simmons of the Denver Broncos. And here's a guy who, by the end of his career, he is going to have a great argument for the best single high free safety maybe of all time. I mean, you know, that's, you're all cool a little bit. That's very lofty expectations, but he's going to be, he's going to have an argument for, he's going to be up there. Um, you know, he's, he has the, the combination that you need, you know, everything for a single high free safety. He is, he's extremely rangy, about as rangy as Jesse Bates is. He has some of the best ball skills, maybe the best of a safety. Um, great coverage instincts he's very good around the line of scrimmage as well so he's kind of a little bit better jesse bates in single high but he's also a lot better around the line of scrimmage like i said potential to be one of the greatest single high free safeties ever um i mean he really ch he checks all the boxes he's extremely fun to watch and i mean the only reason that he's not a number one is because the guy at number one is extremely good i'm sure you've all figured out who it is already um but Justin Simmons, he definitely has an argument for one. I'm sure by the end of this year, he's actually going to be number one. And finally, to the number one safety on my list from the Kansas City Chiefs, Tyron Matthew. And I think I may be the only person on earth who has Tyron Matthew at the top of his safety list. But, you know, and I can understand why you wouldn't have him that highly. Um, you know, I don't know if he's really the best at anything in the NFL don't think he has the best instincts, the best ball skills. He's not the best box safety, not the best single high safety. Uh, you know, he's not as good of a pass rusher as Jamal Adams, not as good of a ball hawk as Justin Simmons, any of that. But I think he's, I think you could always, this year, you could always count on him to make a big play, right? And he was going to talk big after it too. But, you know, just in big situations, he always seemed to be in the right spot to me. And when I watched the Chiefs, it just looked like he was kind of the leader of their defense in a way that the other guys on this list really weren't. Um, I think he has an unusual combo, really, of great coverage and great box play. Um, I think he's a very good coverage safety, which he doesn't get a lot of credit for, but he's very good at making plays on the ball. He's also a great box safety. You know, he's great against run. He's great against the run. He's a great pass rusher. And honestly, just KC... Kansas City really allowing him to be aggressive, I think, brought out the best in him last year. You know, I think this list is very volatile. I don't know if he'll be at number one again next year, but he's, he's number one this year, in my opinion. You can make an argument for a lot of guys, but for me, Tyron Matthew, he just, he was always there and he was always making plays. So that's why he's my number one. But yeah, so that's my top 10 NFL safeties list. Once again, this list is always subjective, as all sports takes are. So, you know, obviously take it with a take it with a grain of salt, but also still, you know, just maybe some entertainment to put out to the public here. Um, once again, if you disagree with anything, please drop a comment. Uh, you know, I'd like to get educated by some of you because I know, you know, that there are people that know a lot more than me that are doing this. And so, you know, if anyone that thinks they know a lot more than me about this wants to chime in, that's fine. I'm sure you do. Um, so please drop a comment about that. Um, please like and subscribe if you want a um, an NFL a top 10 NFL cornerbacks list because I already have that list done. Uh, I'm trying to make that video because the videos are a lot harder to make than ranking the corners but or ranking the players but you know we'll keep trudging on this offseason through the top 10 players at every NFL position until we get down to quarterback. Um, but until next time I'm Bucky Badger W saying peace out.